Hello, this is Sue from dragoncreations.co.uk and today we're going to do the inserts, the coaster inside the coaster and we're going to start with the inserts. So, numbers. I mixed up 100 grams, which was 52A48B. Mine's a one-to-one -one resin. Then I decanted 20 grams with four drops of pigment tint, royal blue. 20 grams of clear one, 20 grams of mica one, which was blue ice, and 20 grams of mica two, which was my own made silver, and I will tell you how I made that, with my silver grey and my white, and it was two scoops of grey to three scoops of white, and by scoops I mean heaped spoons and I've just ordered myself some new spoons so I'll tell you be able to put the link up for the spoons and then I've got um sorry I've got 20 grams of clear two sitting on the side so yes I just wanted to tell you how to uh, make that silver because people have been asking what's my measurements for certain colors that I've been making my purple, I can't tell you because I threw everything in to get my purple. So I can't honestly tell you. I can tell you the colours I used, but I can't tell you the ratio. Which is a bit annoying because I just kept going until I got a nice colour. But as I said before, don't be afraid to mix your micas. Oh, and the other thing that I was going to let you know is people have been asking about how I calculate my re my resin ratios and I actually use a resin calculator app and I will show you that in the second part of this because I have to set my iPad up for it but I will show you the app I use to break down the ratios and how to use the app And if you ever want to find out the weight of a mould, when you first get it, fill it with either water or rice and weigh it. And that should give you a rough guide of how much your mould will hold. And then when you make your first piece, weigh your first piece. And between the two, you should be able to get an accurate weight of how much your mould will hold. Right, I'm just going on top of what I've already poured. And then I'm literally going to save that much. It's about two grams. Not even that, I don't think. It's about one gram, I think. Okay, and then we'll go in with our clear one. And that will go next to, so it's touching our tint. And we'll push that tint backwards. And if you take your time doing this bit, you shouldn't get too many bubbles. So next to what we've already put down, make sure they're touching. The app is uh, free to download from the App Store and it, it's just really, it's got loads of different resins on it. And you can either choose your make of resin or the one-to-one -one, but I will show you the app and how to use it but it just means that somebody's done all the complicated calculations for you <laughs> So use it all up I 
Oh, and if you want to know what my sticks are, these are <laughs> from Amazon plastic tongue depressors. <laughs> That's how you'll find them. And it's just instead of using the wooden sticks because they can hold bubbles. Right, so give a quickly bubble. My husband keeps saying I need to write everything down so he can put it in the links in below the uh, video. But at the moment I'm too busy making videos to link everything, but I will do it for you. But if you have any questions, just ask me in the comments. Oh, I am going to start a Facebook group as well, so that you can show me your pictures. Because I'd like to see if you can, if this is working, or if I'm not giving you the right recipe. It works for me, but it's not working for you for some reason. So that will be coming soon. Once my darling husband sets everything up for me. He does all the video edit editing and everything. I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> I do this. He does that. Right. Okay. So we're going to go in with our uh, Michael one. What do we want? Silver or blue? Silver or blue? Let's go with silver. So we're going with our Michael one. Right in the middle. Just make sure you split it evenly. And you can do that by checking your levels, just bending down to see if you, you've got it split between the two, which is lovely. And again, every last little drop we can get. And what you're looking for is for the mica to go under the clear, which is, is happening already. And don't worry if it doesn't happen straight away, because it can depend on room temperature and things like that. But because it's warmed up in, in the UK where I am, We've actually got some sunshine at the moment, which is nice. I know global warming is bad, but when you live in a country like the UK, it's nice to have some sunshine. Well, every last little bit I can get out. So that's Micah one in. Give it a bubble. Oh, that one's totally gone under. That's good. You'd have to let me know choice of colours as well. What colours do you prefer? I'm going to push these up so you can see them a bit better. There we go. And then puddle pour right in the middle. And it will disappear.
checking my levels to see which one needs a tiny bit more in. that you wouldn't know we've put blue in it it disappeared straight away but that's good that's what we're looking for so again we'll give a deep bubble and then we'll go in with our, our second clear Mine's just been sitting off to the side because it's in a bigger cup. This is the cup that I mixed everything in and it's too big to keep on the levelling table with everything else. So right in the middle. Get some height in it. Push everything out a little bit. Then it's going to suck back in straight away. Now, as I've said before, these moulds are not full. You can get at least another 10 grams. But the reason that I have not filled these moulds up is we need the lip to be prominent rather than the resin inside. Because when we put this inside the next mould, we want the lip to be touching the silicone mould rather than the resin. And that way we should get a nice seal and there shouldn't be too much underpour. Whereas if we fill these right the way up, sorry about the scraping noise, the resin could dome and then when we put them in the next mould, the resin will sit on the silicone instead of the lip of the mould and you'll get underpour. So that is the reason that I do not fill these right the way up when I'm doing a two coaster to pour. Because they take 60 grams and we're only putting 50 in each. But if, even if we um, don't evenly split it, we can guarantee that both of them will not be proud and the moulds will be sitting on the uh, silicone instead of the resin. So that is the reason that I'm not filling them right to the top. I hope that makes sense. It's a bit long winded, but I wanted to explain to you why that. There is a method in my madness. <laughs> OK, and then the pigment that we saved our scraping from earlier, which is now, because I laid it on its side, it's now all puddled in the bottom. I'm literally going to pour that in the middle to add that bit of colour from when the centre all sucks back in, we normally get clear. And put your cup really close because we want it to sink. We don't want it to spread too much. So we don't, oh, we don't want it to push anything out. We just literally want it to stink in the middle. And then again, I'll get every last little drop I can. And that's it. 
nothing in there now. Oh, I wasn't watching. <laughs> There's me saying put it in the middle. So, empty cup. And when I'm making the scraping noises, that's what I'm doing. I'm literally scraping the bottom of the barrel to get every bit out. I'm just peeling myself off so I don't get sticky. And then we're going for our last day bubble. I mean, if you want to, you can, instead of putting um, pigment in the middle, you can put glass, uh, flakes of gold, whatever you want, stones, glitter. Now, glitter might be a bit of a problem. If you can just contain it to one tiny spot, because mica and glitter don't mix that well in a dragon scale if you put it in the middle, because mica thinks glitter's spiky. And instead of contracting, it goes, oh, you're a bit spiky and the scales won't close totally. So glitter in the middle is a little bit, unless it's really, really fine glitter, then you should be OK. Um, but stones and things like that, like that, they're fine. It's fine with. But glitter, it does find it a little bit spiky, I've found. I mean, by all it means, all means experiment, I do. I've just found for me glitter in the middle. I don't get the really nice close scale that I like. There. And what we're looking for are the spots. We've got veining, but it's more the spot. Ah, here we go. We've got some spots starting on the edge. This one. No. Oh, we've got a couple coming up here. We've got some spots starting on the edge here, so that's good. So I will cover these and leave them to set. Don't demold. Leave them in the moulds. And then we shall go on to the next stage. And I will show you the app before we start the next stage. So I'll see you in the next bit. Bye for now. Right, before we start, I'm going to show you the app. It's Resin Pro. It's by Resin Pro and it's an epoxy calculator. So once you've downloaded it off the App Store, it will come up with this and you choose your language and then go down into Breakdown Components and then it will say Select Type of Resin. And you have all these resins to choose from. And if you can't find your resin and it's a one-to-one -one resin, just press one-to-one. -one. And then we're going to make up 100 grams. So 100 calculate, which is 48. If it's above 50, you go to the next number. So it's 48 and 52. And that is the app I use. So it's by Resin Pro. And it's down, downloaded from the App Store. And it's as simple as that. That's how you calculate how much resin you need. So I need 48.52. Okay, so I will get mixing. Right, these are all nice and dry now. So I'm just going to give them a light wipe on the back. Make sure there's no greasy finger marks around the edge as well. And again, this is just isopropyl alcohol that I've put on a bit of kitchen roll. Okay, so now comes the centering bit. Well, that's not too bad. Once you've got them centered, go around the edge of the mold and just press them down and you'll feel the friction that they won't move. That could have caused a bubble. Just spotted that. There was a little tiny bit of overpour stuck on the edge. So push them down. 
that's not centre, but I'm not here to be perfect, am I? <laughs> okay, so I mixed up 100 grams, which was, I just said it to you. I put my calculator back now. 52A and 48B. So, decanted 20 grams of pigment, four drops of our pigment tint, 20 grams of clear one, 20 grams of mica one, which was our blue ice, 20 grams of mica two, which are our silver, and I've got 20 grams of clear two sitting to the side. So, we're going to go in and we're going to make sure we touch the outside edge. And we're not going to save any of this because we don't need to this time. I know it seems like a long process just to make one coaster because we've got another pour after this. But to get those scales in the middle, unfortunately, this is the way that I can semi-guarantee you will have scales. I've tried it so many different ways so that you didn't have to. I even tried my old trusty shower curtain. I wrapped, I took it out the mould and I wrapped it in the shower curtain to make the mould shiny on the inside. And I got some tiny scales. They weren't, I wasn't overly happy with the scales that I got. But there was so much when you wrapped it. It was so bulky that the inside didn't look very pretty. Even though it was flat and shiny, I just didn't like it. So then I decided I want matte scales. So I went on the journey to try and get matte scales. And it's all trial and error. And that's why it's taken me so long to be able to give you a, a semi-guaranteed recipe. I mean, as you've seen on some of mine, I don't always get scales that close over. But I'd say 9 out of 10 or 8 out of 10. Right, this one I'm going to pour on the inside lip of the inner mould. It's just to make sure I've got contact on both sides. So make sure you're touching the inner mould. So the tint's touching the out outside of the mould and the clear is touching the inside and that way we, we will have a seal and then I'll just pour on top of the clear again And again, use it all up. Just keep checking your levels to make sure you're even. Right, and there's a little tiny bit of, it's not lying totally flat, so I'm just going to, they're not bubbles, but it looks like a little bit of friction. I'm just going to run my dotting tool around the inside mould. It 
could be where I didn't pour it on the inside mould properly. Yeah. Brilliant. I can see what's happened now. I caught the inside mould and it, it was pouring down. So it made it look like it was puckering, but it's not. It's It was my mistake. Right, quick debubble. Don't go too deep into the mould, just run it over quickly. And then we'll go in with our mica one, which is going to be blue. And we're going to puddle pour this, if you understand what I mean, which is right in the middle. So puddle pour. And then just go back on, excuse me, just go back on top of what you already poured. So yeah, that resin calculator is brilliant. It's free to download from the App Store. And um, if you don't use the App Store, you use some type of other app like um, a Kindle or use an Amazon, I'm sure oh, I'm sure you'll be able to find a resin calculator app. If not, you can probably download it through um, Google Chrome. Oh, look, I've sploshed. Just trying to make my rings even and use every last little drop we can. And as for the measurements of the mica and the clear and the pigment, um, it just took me ages to find out which was the right ratio. Sometimes the ratios were different for a different mould. So it won't always be um, divided by five. Sometimes it will be divided by six. Even though there's only five going in, it's, it's hard to explain. So... Sometimes I'll put more mica in because the shape of the mould is different. Sorry, I'm concentrating again, trying to get this out. And then if we're doing a certain effect, you might want to put more mica in and more of a certain colour in and again that will make the ratios different so there's lots you can actually do with dragon scales lots of effects you can do within dragon scales themselves But the basic recipe should be able to help you tweak it here and there and you can have a play and get different results. That's all I do. Right, so quick debubble. Just going not too deep into the mould again. Rid of those little mm, micro bubbles. And then we'll go on with our silver, and again we'll puddle pour in the middle on top of the blue. No, I've got to stop. That is right where my hand needs to be. There, that's better. 
start again. That's better. And don't worry about the little drips that are on the uh, centre mould because we'll be able to pick them off before we do the next bit. Just keep an eye on your levels to make sure that they're even. Just going on top of the silver, round and round. And this amount, when we put our second clear on, this amount will bring you to the to level with the lip of the inner mould. I've got the measurements right this time so I know how much to put in to bring you just level with the inner mould. Every last little drop we can get. Okay, that's our micas in. Quick debubbly. Oh, that's the wrong lighter. <laughs> that one doesn't have a flame on it. There we go, and then last of all, I'll clear two, and we again we will keep an eye on our levels, and we just puddle pour. And when this cup is standing off to the side, I have it tilted so that all the resin is pulled in one side, ready to pour. And again, use every last little bit you can, because that should bring you let it should bring it level with the uh, inner mold edge.
Oops. <laughs> Doing it cack handed. For me, anyway. I'm not going to wipe it off on the side of the mould either because I don't want it to pull away from the inner mould. Come on, a nice little bit. There. Excellent. So 100 grams <clears throat> will bring you level with the uh, surface of the inner mould. So when we do our next pour, our last pour, that will be our dragon scales in the middle pour. So we'll have scales on the inside, the outside and the inside inside. <laughs> Cleaning myself off so I don't become a big sticky mess. And then go in for our final debubble. And if you do see any big bubbles start to come up, just press your mould down, your inside mould down. And that should uh, hopefully make contact again. And these little bits that are on here, we'll, I'll clean them off before we do the next stage. So that is our second stage. So for our last stage, we'll be making up, um, uh, it's either 70 or 80, I've got to check. But again, I'll be using the same colours. So that'll be the blue ice, the silver and the royal blue. So I'll cover these and leave them to set until oh, about six hours six to seven hours then i'll be able to pour on top of them without anything sinking through and then we shall demold after that but one more stage so i shall see you in the next bit bye for now right so these are dry enough to pour on now so i've made up 70 grams which is 37 a and 33 b then i decanted 18 grams of clear one, 17 grams of mica one, and 17 grams of mica two, and 17 grams of clear two. Again, we used the blue ice, the silver, and I've got the royal blue to mix into a little bit of clear left over from the second one. So I am going to spray these with isopropyl so that will hopefully get it moving so we're not putting pigment in first we're putting the clear on and I'm going to pour straight in the middle again if you only want to make one just half the amount Make sure you get it all out.
Right, and what I'm going to do is with gravity just take this so it's just going over the edge of the lip and touching the resin that we've already put in. Hopefully you can see that. It's just just going over the lip. And that's just to give it a head start on the friction of the mould. So I haven't got dragon scales on the middle of a round mould yet, so hopefully this will be the one. There. And again with this one, I'll let gravity take its... No, do it towards me. I've got more control if you do it towards me. So hopefully you can see that. Just touching the edge of the lip and going over ever so slightly. Come on. Oops. Got you. Okay. Right, now we're going to go in with our mica one and we're going to puddle pour. And hopefully, by pushing that clear over, the mica should find its way over. last little drop I can get <laughs> oh terrible I hate wasting resin okay so it likes that side better for some reason it doesn't seem to be level on that side. It could be the mould inside actually. But I've got some underpour. Oh mind you, that's doing the same. Now my table is level. I know my table's level. Yeah, it's not going that way, so I don't know why it's all gone that way. It must be the insert not level. Right, we're going to puddle pour again. Got a tiny bit there that doesn't want to break so I'm just gonna use my tool to break that bit and there as well I oh, know that has got clear on it so I don't know why that's not moving see the round mold seem to sit slightly proud in this mold They're not above the lip, but they're just ever so slightly proud. That's why we put 100 grams in, to make sure it was level. I might have to find smaller moulds, or thinner moulds, to do the circles.
mind you it is doing what it's supposed to so but that's not broken there So just make sure your clear has broken that um, surface tension. It's a tiny bit there. There you go. Right, while that's moving and grooving, we'll give it a debubble. See, this one's behaving. It's this one. I'm going to turn it again. Not that I think that will make any difference because my table is level. See, this one is the proud parent one. <laughs> this is behaving. This is what I wanted to happen. That one, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. See, this is what my theory, this is how I, it looked in my head and the theory, but in reality, you can't predict resin. Right, so this is my clear two. I've just kept it off to the side because it was in my big cup and I haven't got room for it. So I'm going to puddle pour again. Let's get some height into it. Let's see if we can get it moving. Especially this one. And then I'm just going to save a little tiny drop and put one, no, two drops of pigment tinting. So give it a shake first. Why well, that's pretending to make scales. literally a tiny amount in my cup I'd say about three three grams I'm just trying to stir this pigment in while it's moving and grooving and not create too many bubbles hopefully Sorry, I'm going to do this away from you because it's going to be a horrible scraper noise. Right. Cut all the pigment up the side of the cup. Oh dear. in the middle I saved a bit more than I thought I should have actually so yeah about three grams there
levels are fine, which is good. So 70 seemed to be the right amount. Any more and we would have had some overpour. I just saved a bit too much for the blue, I think. Well, hopefully the blue won't stop it from creating the scales. This one's going to do it. That one, I'm not so sure. So, even though the measurements are right, for some reason, if my mould, my inner mould's not totally flat and I've got underpour and I don't know it, it's not levelled out. It's touching the side though, the clear, isn't it? Yes. So the clear has gone all the way to the side, just the mica hasn't. So I shall give it another turn, just in case. But I don't think it's... I think it's the insert that's not... I reckon we're going to have underpour on this one. I didn't see any bubbles when it was uh, setting. So just get rid of those micro bubbles where I've just mixed that tint in. There. So I will, I'm not going to fiddle with them, so the edge of that might be clear, but it doesn't really matter because it will be on the underneath. We're more worried about what's going to happen in the middle. And I keep pointing to that one because that one's doing what it's supposed to. We have got spots appearing, which is good. Oh, we've got one spot in that. Whether or not they'll migrate to the middle, I don't know. So I will cover them, forget about them till tomorrow morning and then we shall demould and find out together whether or not it worked. But if that one works then the theory's there. I've just got to sort out if it's the, if it's the inner mould is a little bit taller or I've got underpour. I think I've got underpour which has pushed it up slightly. Anyway, I shall see you in the demoulding. Bye for now. Right, they're all nice and set now. And I did have a bit of overflow on this one. But that's only because I've filled it up too much. So Right, so let's crack them. Come on, give me an edge. Got it. It's hard to do upside down. That's it. There, right. That's out, nice and clean. So they've got a little tiny bit of overflow on them. Which I won't pull up now. Let's get this mould out. Nice and clean. Okay, so let's have a look at these first. Oh, wicked. Sorry. <laughs> just take that little tiny bit of overflow off. Just push off and ping off. No, I won't do that. <laughs> I do like the blue and silver. That has come up so well. And again, just a tiny bit of underflow just push off. I'll do that in a minute. 
so I've got it everywhere now. Okay, now this is the bit. I don't want to turn it over. We haven't got spots. We've got veining, but we haven't got spots. So I don't think we've got many scales in the middle. Nope, they're around the edge. Oh, that's a shame. No, I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. We've got scales around the outside, but not in the middle. Again, we've got veining, but we haven't got spots. So I, I don't think, no. We've got really, really tiny scales on the outside, but not in the middle. So we have got scales, but I want them to be really tight in the middle. So, oh, and look, look what the silver's done. It's pulled at the side slightly. That's interesting. And a tiny bit of a underflow, which just picks off. But I shall do that in a minute. <laughs> Stand there for ages doing it. So, yes. So the measurements are right. I've just got to get the scales to pull in. But I do like the blue and silver. That's come up really well. So I will try again. And I might do silver again, actually, because I do like the silver. It's very sparkly. And we will get those res those scales to suck right the way in like they do here. So I shall clean the edges up and take them out in the sunlight, because we've got sunlight. We've got really sunny days at the moment. So you can see the colours. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.